Adobe Premiere versus Final Cut Pro. What are the real world differences and which one is the best video editor for you in 2018? I use both of them for a range of projects and here's what you need to know. So Premiere and Final Cut Pro are two of the most popular options when it comes to video editing software. So it's no surprise that I constantly get asked which one is better. In all honesty, I actually use a mix of both of them for different projects and we've been doing this for quite a few years now. But there definitely are some differences that are worth knowing before you decide which one is the best one for you. And that's what we're about to run through in this video. Now, while we're going through, let me know in the comments if you're using either one of these, which side of the fence you're on and why, and do you prefer Final Cut or Premiere? So let's start out looking at Final Cut Pro. Now, for me, this is my standout editor and my go-to editor for any projects that I'm working on where I really am working solo on the edit. So not bringing in external editors or external team members to work collaboratively on the project. They're purely ones that I'm editing myself from start to finish. I've been using Final Cut for years on all sorts of projects from documentaries and high-end corporate videos and a lot of our YouTube content as well. So now I'm gonna share with you the top five things that I love about Final Cut Pro. And these are in no particular order. But the first one is crazy fast, not just while you're exporting and rendering, but fast and easy to use and buttery smooth while you're scrubbing through 4K and even higher resolution footage as well. And we've done a heap of tests on this. We've even compared older Macs running Final Cut versus the latest and greatest PCs running Adobe Premiere on render speeds and timeline performance. And so far, nothing comes close to Final Cut even on older Macs versus brand new PCs. To find out more on those tests, I'll put a link up in the cards giving you some of those examples. But even little things like having background rendering enabled by default, it just speeds up your export times massively as well. So not only is it a great experience while you're editing and everything is smooth and fast and makes it easy and enjoyable to edit in, your export times and your render times are super fast as well. In some cases, some of the 4K videos that we're actually exporting, we hit share and save the file out and there is no export time at all. It literally just saves the file and it's done. So the export time is almost instant on some of the videos we're creating. And I really think that's down to Apple's software talking to Apple's hardware and the awesome integration that they have between the two. The next thing I really like about Final Cut is the control you have over the color correction. It is much, much better than it used to be. So if you haven't tried Final Cut recently, one of the newer versions used to just be absolute rubbish, absolute trash. Now it's much, much better, and it almost rivals what you would get in Adobe Premiere Pro. I still think Premiere's got the edge on it for color grading and using the Lumetri color, but this is, by all means, more than usable and more than enough for most videos that you're going to be grading. There's also no need now to have additional plugins and things to give you these more advanced tools that you used to have to do because now it's all in there. The third one is the magnetic timeline. Now this is something that when I first used it, I absolutely hated. It was so backwards and so foreign to me coming from Avid, coming from Premiere and using those things for years. This magnetic timeline was something I dismissed. I actually opened Final Cut and closed it and I didn't use it for like another year or something until I started taking it more seriously. I'm like, okay, a lot of people are now using this. I should really look at it. And it is actually really, really powerful. I now love that and I now prefer that to your standard regular timelines. It's so easy to move things around and to change everything and keep everything beyond that in sync. Now, obviously you can do the same sort of stuff in Premiere, so it's not a big thing. It's just a different way to look at your editing and to approach your editing. And I really think it is really, really powerful, but it did take a bit of getting used to because it's totally different to the way that other video editing software approach editing. The next one is the way that Final Cut actually handles files and searching of those files and finding and categorizing and sorting all of the files and assets that you've got in your video editing projects. Now this is another feature that I totally dismissed when I first started using it. I hated the way that Final Cut was managing files and, and putting things in bins and stuff. It was so backwards and so different to again, what you would do in Premiere or Avid or most other top line video editing software. So the keyword feature, the search feature inside of Final Cut is actually really, really powerful. And it makes it so easy to tag and to find your clips across different projects and also across different libraries of footage as well. So this is a massive feature. Once you actually get your head around how it works, especially if you're coming from the more traditional editing software, this is a really, really powerful way and a great way to store your footage and to actually find it and easily find it. 
fast later. And the last thing that I really love about Final Cut, and this list obviously could go on and on and on, I've tried to keep this short, but the last one is that it is way less buggy than almost any other video editing application I have ever used. And that's that's a big call, because Avid was pretty rock solid. But this thing hardly ever crashes, and I could count on one hand the amount of crashes I've had, whereas Premiere, I think we were getting crashes and still are getting crashes almost every week on new projects, different systems. It's just way less buggy. Final Cut is way less buggy than Premiere and most other video editing software. And again, I think that is because Apple is making the software and they're also directly linking that into their hardware as well. But I can't stress how good it is to be working on a project that you really have next to no chance of it crashing or the, the software being buggy. In Premiere, you get used to pressing Control S or Command S constantly just to save and even to save new versions of a project in case a project file corrupts. All of these things have happened and have happened quite a few times to us. So you kind of get used to all of that stuff happening until you start working on a rock solid solution. Okay, so those are my top five things that I really like about Final Cut. Now let's take a look at Premiere. Now for me personally, Premiere, I've been using it for years and actually a lot longer than I've been using Final Cut. And it has been my go-to for the majority of the corporate work, the majority of the documentaries that we've been producing. And hands down, Premiere is our go-to program for any projects that we know we're gonna be working on collaboratively with other team members or other editors as well. And even the bulk of our YouTube videos now is actually edited in Adobe Premiere by some of our team as well. So even this one is edited in Adobe Premiere. So now for the things that I really like about Adobe Premiere, again, in no particular order. The first one is that it's cross-platform compatible, meaning that you can use it on both Mac and PC, or Windows and Mac, it doesn't matter. It's gonna work on both. So for us personally, I use a combination. Sometimes I'm editing on PC, sometimes I'm editing on Mac, or sometimes the editors that I'm working with and the teams that we're collaborating with will be using a mix of Mac and PC. And it's so awesome to be able to transfer the projects and everything between them, make the changes, send the project files back or whatever it is work collaboratively and open projects on different systems whereas Final Cut on the other hand is Mac only so you can only work with people that are obviously on Mac now flowing on from that the next thing that I really really like about Adobe Premiere that I've mentioned maybe a couple of times or hinted at at least earlier in this video is that working with teams in Adobe Premiere is a really really powerful thing and this is something that I really really like about Adobe Premiere is how you can easily work with teams and collaborate with other editors in Premiere. And while you definitely can do it in Final Cut and other editing applications as well, Premiere just makes it so easy to transfer the files or to work through the Adobe Teams interface and work collaboratively with your editors or teams anywhere in the world. And obviously being compatible and easy to transfer between different systems and Mac and PC as well, it just makes the whole process so easy. The next thing that I really like about Adobe Premiere is the direct integration and the awesome integration you've got with the other Adobe products. Things like After Effects is literally drag and drop and you can open After Effects timelines and link to After Effects projects inside of Premiere. You can directly link with things like Audition or bring in Photoshop files and those sorts of things so easily. It's obviously, it's all made by the same company, so you've got awesome integration between them. No other editing software comes close to the integration that you have using Adobe software with Adobe software. The next two that I'm gonna mention are relatively new to Adobe Premiere, but they are absolute game changers and they actually make editing on Adobe Premiere much, much better. The first one is the new hardware acceleration. Now you might be thinking, yep, the hardware acceleration's been there for a long time. I'm not talking about the Mercury playback engine. What I'm talking about is now, if you're running an Intel CPU, whether you're on Mac or PC, the fast export times that you can have if you tick hardware encode on your export. This has literally dropped export times from 30, 35 minutes down to under five minutes just by ticking this box without a significant hit or any visible hit to quality. Now this is absolutely huge and it can save you so much time in getting your content out. And it actually gets close to what you find in Final Cut with the fast export times or the fast render times. Now this is something that we're finding that even a lot of big editors don't even realize that this feature is in there. Something like Adobe just try to sneak out there. This is a game changing feature. And if you wanna render your videos faster and you've got an Intel CPU, then you should definitely try ticking that box to enable hardware encoding on your next export to see how much faster it is for you. But for us, it's been an absolute game changer. And the last thing that I really like about Adobe Premiere, again, this list could have gone a lot longer than five, but I'm trying to keep this short. But the last one is the motion essentials or the essential graphic 
interface that you now have inside of Adobe Premiere. This makes it really, really easy to bring in templates or to create your own templates of titles and animations and things that you use all the time throughout your videos. Now you can drag and drop them into your timeline, but you can also edit them directly inside the timeline. This also opens you up to purchasing templates and, and motion graphics and things from places like Video Hive and literally dragging and dropping them onto your timeline without the need to open After Effects or know how to use After Effects and still be able to edit and make changes to these titles and customize them up and get them into your project really, really fast. Now this is a feature that came out a little while back, but it's now at the point where there are some really solid templates that you can grab again on places like Video Hive and drag and drop them in and get some great results in your videos so easily. And it's really, really powerful. So those are my top five things that I really like about Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, with all of that in mind, you really can't go wrong with either one of them, but the strengths and weaknesses of each of them mean that they can both perform better for certain types of projects. And that's why we actually switch between the two of them on a week by week or even day by day sometimes basis depending on the project that we're working on. So to round this out and to give you some recommendations, if you're on a PC, then that's gonna make the decision really easy because you can't get Final Cut, so go with Premiere. If you're on a Mac, then you have the choice of either one of them. If you're an absolute beginner, I would say that Final Cut is probably easier to get up to speed with. I think the interface is more intuitive, but at the same time, Adobe Premiere isn't hard to use and it's got all the direct integration with the rest of the Adobe suite, like After Effects and Photoshop and all of those sorts of things as well. So for me personally, we use Adobe Premiere for any projects where we're going to be working collaboratively with any external editors or or any other team members really that are gonna be involved in the project. It's just so easy to be able to move the project files around and to transfer between Mac and PC as well. And then for any projects where we're not gonna be working with external editors or external team members, then all our editing will go to Final Cut. I really like how fast it is, the performance that it has, especially for adding multiple layers of 4K footage or higher resolution clips. It just handles it so well. And the export time has been next to nothing or really, really fast on more complex projects is just a massive benefit as well. But also the fact that it is way more stable than any version of Premiere on any system that I've ever used before as well. So throw that in your decision mix as well. Now, no matter which one of these you choose, there are some simple workflows that can dramatically reduce your workload and save you a ton of time while you're editing your videos down. There's a link on screen to the Primal Video Method, which is a free PDF download, taking you through step-by-step step the most efficient way to edit your videos down with minimal wasted time and rework during the process. So make sure you click that link on screen and I'll see you soon.